coming up this week on Big Sky Outdoors. We head high into the Swan Range with your ski for some sledding and backcountry skiing. Exploring the backcountry in style coming up next on Big Sky Outdoors. Big Sky Outdoors is brought to you by Counter Assault, your ultimate protection in the wild, and by Montana Army Navy. Get it, get out, and live it. Hi, and thanks for joining us this week on Big Sky Outdoors. I'm Matt Redding. Hey, today we're up at almost 7,000 feet in the Swan Range. And we're staying in one of these Mongolian-style yurts. If you've never stayed in a yurt before, it's a great way to experience the backcountry in the dead of winter. It was a cold, wet start to the day as we met at the trailhead with Carl Sievers and Adam Simon, co-owners of Yurt Ski, a backcountry yurt and skiing operation in the Swan Range. Carl gave us a quick overview of what to expect on the way up to the yurt. Yeah, nothing better than two-stroke in the morning. So we'll go ahead and get going. Uh, it'll be about an 11-mile trip in, uh, to the yurts. We'll stop along the way and take some breaks, make sure everybody's doing all right check on our gear. We get about two miles in and make sure everything's going well. Uh, then we'll stop again and grab some water. Uh, but otherwise, we'll do a quick beacon check this morning just to make sure everybody's beeping and everyone's on the same page. Uh, there's one fairly good slide path between the two yurts that we'll go underneath uh, on our way in. So we want to make sure we're looking good. It had snowed all night and we were a little concerned about the avalanche danger. It's going to be interesting what you have up there. You can have some heavy wet snow. So. But after a quick beacon check, we loaded the rest of our gear and headed up on our sleds. There are several options for accessing the yurt, but we chose the quickest and easiest way there. We offer a variety of different packages for uh, you know anything people want. So you know, for, for someone who hasn't had a lot of experience with snowmobiles, maybe they show up to the trailhead, and we grab their gear from them, we load it all into gear sleighs, and throw out some ropes, and we tow them up the mountain. And that's not really something that a lot of people see that at other operations, because um, you're having to walk in. So it's a different experience. A lot of people like that. You can bring a lot more creature comforts. We do have some folks that are completely self-sufficient, and that they'll hike all the way in and carry all their own gear. And we'll give them a map, talk a little bit about snowpack and avalanche conditions, um, get them headed in the right direction. We uh, pull water from the spring. We drink out of it regularly. We don't typically treat it. It's nice that it runs all winter, makes things a good, easy, not have to melt any snow. After a quick gear check and water break, we realized that we had only had one minor hiccup along the route. Did you find it? Yeah. We only got run over by three sleds. <laughs> so we have three yurts. There's two 20-foot yurts that are separated by about a mile. There's two yurts sit situated at the up high location we call the Alpine. A little 10-foot yurt that we primarily use as a guide yurt, and then uh, a 20-foot yurt that houses uh, the guests. We have a fully stocked kitchen, beds with mattresses, all the creature comforts. You can use stocked wood, all ready to go to keep you warm. Plenty of spots to dry your gear out. So you can have a great day of skiing, and then you can oh, yeah. come out and have a nice experience with your friends and family and make memories. So you excited about the trip? Oh gosh, yeah, love it. Love all the powdery snow. It's, we'll see how heavy it is, but it'll be fun, yeah. We've got our gear inside the yurt and we're all settled in. It's time to start doing what we came up here for, and that's backcountry skiing and snowboarding. That's coming up after the break, but first, this week's quiz question. 
backcountry skiing and sledding is becoming increasingly more popular throughout Montana and the Rocky Mountain region. As this use increases, so does the likelihood of human-caused avalanches. The conditions that create a high avalanche danger are complex and variable. So that brings us to this week's outdoor quiz question. What is the average slope angle that most avalanches occur on? If you know the answer, find Big Sky Outdoors on Facebook or at www.bigskyoutdoorshow.com. Click on our outdoor quiz link, give us the correct answer, and you'll be entered to win a canister of bear spray from our friends at Counter Assault, your ultimate protection in the wild. Big Sky Outdoors will be right back after these messages. hunting headquarters it's the best place around when you're serious about saving money on the things you need to go hunting knife sharpeners wool gloves backpacking meals optics socks boots insoles stoves why it's a virtual hunters checklist all name brands and all at fantastic savings on highway 2 and evergreen and highway 93 and whitefish montanaarmynavy.com After a short ride from the lupine yurt, we arrived to the upper hut, or alpine yurt. The main difference between the lupine and the alpine yurt is about 200 vertical feet and about three quarters of a mile. Uh, the alpine yurt, however, seems to be the favorite of most groups that have been up here because it puts you um, right into the middle of the ridge and it'll push you back into some more of the bigger terrain, more of the wide open bowls, those really aesthetic pretty lines that are back there. As we arrived that morning, another group was just leaving that had been there for about a week doing an avalanche course. Uh, we also put on some avalanche level one classes uh, up here and they include one day uh, classroom in Missoula, and then two nights, three days skiing here up at the Yurt Ski. We come up pretty much every year this time, right at the end of the season, to teach a avalanche course um, as part of our semester in wilderness medicine. So these are students that have just finished up their um, wilderness EMT certifications. They just all tested last weekend. They all passed. Woo. How was your trip? Oh, it's excellent. <laughs> Good to ask for more. Staying in these yurts provides quick and easy access to the area's backcountry skiing terrain. We feel really fortunate to have the terrain we do. For one, it provides a, a variety uh, for the different types of skiers out there. If you just want to come up and all you want to do is tour and you're not even getting downhill turns, you can get up on the ridge, have beautiful views of the Mission, the Scapegoat, the Bob Marshall Wilderness, and then just get a short shot back down to the yurt and we have folks that love to do that. And then we have the complete polar opposite of the folks that are looking to have those bigger lines, you know, next to the big rocks and big cliff faces. And so, you know, and everything in between and great glade skiing for, for the majority of the people that's, that's the, that come up here, that's what they're looking for. By late morning, we decided to take a quick tour and check out our skiing options for the day. We skied a couple hundred feet above the yurt to look at the conditions and possible lines. It didn't take long to realize that the conditions were less than ideal. 
what do you think of the snowpack? A little sketchy today. <laughs> Sitting over here looking at this crown. Definitely there's a... Uh, so we decided to dig a pit to analyze the snowpack so we could make an educated decision on what and where to ride for that day. All right, a lot of people in Montana recreate. Here's the deal. They're recreating on slopes that are 35 degrees or steeper. They enjoy it. It's great powder skiing or riding on a sled. So when we go out in the field, we're looking at what the instability might be on steep uh, terrain for these recreationists. Yeah, you can never be 100% sure if it's very steep that the snow won't slide, but a lot of people enjoy powder skiing, a lot of people enjoy sledding, and uh, so we're out looking on steep aspects for instabilities in the snow. Ooh, here's another one. I think that's the one to worry about. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's super smooth. Wow. Uh, it went on a 16. And then this, I pulled off, but that's crazy terrifying. Based on your assessment, what would you do today? Um, I'd ski in the trees, and I'd ski, that would be it. But it'd be more based on the fact that there's like natural avalanches everywhere, less on the pit. So, stay in the trees, mellow trees. Be safe. Be safe, yeah. Really concerned about is if anything steps down for some reason. If you get enough snow and trained to put enough weight on the snowpack that it steps down it would be. So after a brief discussion, we decided to make a short run back to the yurt. What should we do, ski? Yeah. Oh. Let's shred this thing. One thing to remember before you head out into the backcountry to snowmobile or ski is to check your beacon. Make sure it's got some fresh batteries and it's working properly. Hey, let's take a look and see what's happening on your favorite river or lake with this week's fish report. Navy is your hunting headquarters. It's the best place around when you're serious about saving money on the things you need to go hunting. Knife sharpeners, wool gloves, backpacking meals, optics, socks, boots, insoles, stoves. Why, it's a virtual hunter's checklist. All name brands and all at fantastic savings. On Highway 2 in Evergreen and Highway 93 in Whitefish. MontanaArmyNavy.com. After a quick break and some lunch, 
we decided to head back up the ridge line to look for turns. Carl said we'd be going through some slide paths and everyone needs to be avvy savvy. We do require everyone to have avalanche equipment and so that basic uh, beacon, shovel and a probe uh, before they come up to the area. There is a pretty large slide path between the two yurts uh, that we cross under. Um, otherwise there's not a ton of uh, exposure along the way up. How's the skiing today? The skiing's pretty good. Not the driest of snow, but any snow is always good snow. The nice part about our terrain, the way that it's situated, that a lot of the shots are around that thousand plus vertical feet or so, and so they're nice short shots where you can yo-yo ski and you can really get around and travel the ridges and whatnot. Uh, the super nice thing about it is if you get up to the top of something and you're not really liking what the snow looks like or the snow quality isn't the best or whatever, it's really easy to just change your aspect uh, and get into some better snow. And a lot of times it's honestly just a matter of turning and skiing off the other way. And for our area, that really uh, helps us out. I feel like we can almost always get into some really good snow here it's really easy to change your aspect and get onto better snow and we do have that wide variety of your nice 30 degree trees and then up to 40 some degree rock shoots and some really nice wide open 35 degree bowls with uh, really pretty aesthetic rocks in them as well as a group we made our way up to the morel lookout where the views of the mission and swan ranges made all the hiking well worth it. After all that work, there's the, the great reward of, of going downhill. But uh, you have to love the up, because we spend 95% of our day going up. Yeah. But of course, the best part of backcountry skiing is finding fresh, untouched powder. Navy is your hunting headquarters. It's the best place around when you're serious about saving money on the things you need to go hunting. Knife sharpeners, wool gloves, backpacking meals, optics, socks, boots, insoles, stoves. Why, it's a virtual hunter's checklist. All name brands and all at fantastic savings. On Highway 2 in Evergreen and Highway 93 in Whitefish. MontanaArmyNavy.com. Welcome back to Big Sky Outdoors. Hey, whether you're spending a night up here in the yurt or just looking for something around town to do, here's a list of a few of the events on this week's outdoor calendar. Coming up on June 21st at 9 a.m. is the start of a two-day introduction to whitewater kayaking on the Blackfoot River. 
Cost is $200, which includes equipment rental. Contact ZooTownSurfers.com for more information. Also on Saturday, June 21st, is the Wolfman's Continental Divide Trail 14K. This single track point to point race from home stake to Pipestone Pass is a local favorite. Check them out online for more information. On Friday, June 27th, grab your canoe and head over to the Roundup Rapid on the Blackfoot River. It should be a wet and wild event for both participants and spectators. Visit www.2014opencanoenationals.com for more information. On Saturday, June 28th is the Beartooth Blitz, a 23 mile, 4,700 foot bicycle climb up into the Beartooth Mountains. It'll be a grunt, but well worth the spectacular views. For more information, contact www.headwaterstudio.com. If you have an event that you would like to post on Big Sky Outdoors, go to our Facebook page or www.bigskyoutdoorsshow.com. Give us all the details of your outdoor event and we'll post it here on Big Sky Outdoors. Hey, so far it's been a great day up here at Yurt Ski. We're doing some great backcountry skiing and the weather's even starting to improve. The sun's trying to come out a little bit. Hey, if you're interested in coming up here and spending a night with Yurt Ski, give them a call at the number below or check them out online. Hey, it's time to turn the time over to you now for this week's Photo of the Week contest. The first look at this photo from Pete Sedera might have you thinking it's anywhere but this world. But this UFO looking picture is actually a nice shot of a glowing yurt in the mountains above Sealy Lake. Pete made the most of his yurt skiing adventure, earning his turns and skiing with good friends in 10 inches of new powder and returning to a warm hut to enjoy delicious shrimp tacos. Sounds like a trip that was out of this world. Another viewer strapped on his skis for a bluebird day at Whitefish Mountain Resort. Pat Catalino got creative with his awesome shot of himself looking down the front side of the mountain. It looks like he got a few face shots himself. His goggles reflect what every skier likes to see. Endless powder on a beautiful sunny day. The smile says it all folks. Matt Arby wasn't going to let an overturned boat and a sunburn keep him from enjoying this great catch in the Bob Marshall Wilderness. This was just one of many beautiful cuts that came to Matt's fly over several days of floating and fishing with friends. We're just glad he was able to catch his gear as well when the boat flipped. Thanks for sharing your adventures in the Bob. Cindy Nickel knows how to add a little fun to her hikes. Playing peekaboo with these deer rewarded her with this fun shot while enjoying an afternoon hike with her family in the mountains near her home. From the west shore of Hungry Horse Reservoir, you will find our winning photo of the week. Terry Savage sent in this beauty he snapped while spending a day out with his family. Hungry Horse Reservoir is located just 15 miles south of the west entrance of Glacier National Park. The reservoir is about 34 miles long with almost 24,000 acres of water and offers excellent opportunities for fishing, boating, water skiing, and swimming. Terry said the reservoir provides many opportunities for views just like this. Remember to submit your pictures along with a brief explanation of your latest outdoor adventures on our Facebook page at Big Sky Outdoors or on our website, BigSkyOutdoorsShow.com. The winner each week wins a Gold Zero Solar Panel Kit from our friends at Army Navy in Kalispell and Whitefish. Power your next adventure with the sun. Get it, get out, and live it. Adam and, and I both agree is that we both feel incredibly fortunate to spend as much time in the mountains as we do. Um, we get to enjoy beautiful scenery, all the winter phenomenon of picking up four feet of snow overnight or getting just that little skiffle, that super excitement of waking up in the morning and just seeing door up, you know, covered with snow all the way to the top and you know it's going to be a blower day. And so we, we're lucky to be here um, enough that we have a very intimate um, relationship with these mountains here and this is a very special little basin. Thanks for joining us this week on Big Sky Outdoors. Make sure to get outside and make some memories with your families and friends this week. Hey we'll see you next week as we explore more wild places in this great state of ours. We'll see you then.